Hey, what's going on? I'm Jason Rockman, and welcome back to the Rockman Power Hour. Thanks so much for uh, continuing this journey with us, and uh, we could not be here without you. So make sure you like uh, this episode, share, and subscribe, and tell all your friends uh, how much you're enjoying uh, our podcast. And please, in the comments, if there's somebody that you'd like to see on the podcast, somebody you'd like us to talk to, uh, let us know in the comments. We're more than happy to uh, look into that and to try to accommodate you because obviously we want to talk to people that you want to hear from. Uh, thanks to our sponsor heartbeat hot sauce they are uh, one of the best hot sauce companies in the world a small batch fermenter company out of thunder bay ontario and if you use our promo code rockman 20 right there they will give you 20 percent off your entire order you do not want to miss out the opportunity to try heartbeat hot sauce if you haven't already uh we've talked to the guys over at heartbeat and they've told us that people have been using the code like crazy so continue it does not expire it'll get you 20 percent off your entire order of hot sauce and let's bring in my co-host, Ryan Stick. What's going on, my man? Ooh, you're looking like you're rocking a uh, Pauly Shore stack. Yeah, I never thought in my lifetime I would see a shirt dedicated to Pauly Shore movies, never less the VHS uh, counterparts, but here we are. Thank you, Studio House Designs. Studio House Designs also on board, uh, making us look fresh every week. We want to thank them, uh, Cody, over in uh, Philadelphia for uh, having one of the best t-shirt companies in the world. I'm rocking the Islands of the Lambs long sleeve because it is, uh, well, I, I want to say it's starting to get cold in Montreal, but it actually isn't. It's been so warm, but um, it is creeping up on us, and it's nice to have that long sleeve for just that extra bit of fabric, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I got some friends in Calgary who are freezing their asses off right now, so, uh, you know. Uh, come Christmas time, I might get a little snow envy if this uh, heat wave continues. But right now, it's pretty cool walking outside in some shorts. Oh, yeah. 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 I was wearing shorts yesterday and it was absolutely gorgeous. So I'm not complaining at all <laughs> about that. Um, so this week on the show, Ryan, we've got uh, a guy named Doug Pinnock. He's from the band King's X. Now, King's X is a band that uh, that started off in the 80s, uh, mid 80s, very, very influential on so many bands. Um, if you are uh, a fan of progressive rock, then you probably have heard of King's X. They're um, they're just one of those monster trios that left their mark on on music influence so many bands, as you'll hear in the interview, um, you know, bands like Pearl Jam, bands like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, <sighs> bands like Allison Chains, just monster monster players great songwriters uh and a band that kind of flies under the radar and don't get enough attention and we and we talk about that in the interview uh and i'm pretty you know open about it with doug and he's like no no we we def definitely fly under the radar <laughs> and, and i think at we, this agree, point, we agree we should get more praise <laughs> yeah they really really should and they've got a brand new record out um that is just so so much fun it came out on september 2nd and um, it, it's called Three Sides of One. If you get a chance to listen to it, you, you really, really should should let it wash over you. I've had a chance to sit with it for a while now, and I really like the record. I just love the direction that this band goes in. They're never afraid to take chances. And they're, they're one of those bands that just have been on the forefront of so many musical changes. And they've never been ones to follow the change. They're the ones that are making the changes by just doing what comes natural to them. So there are those bands. And we talk about that again, the sweet spot of music that I always like to refer to the late eighties, early nineties, before grunge came in, there was this magic time where rules didn't matter and they fall into that. So, um, I hope people enjoy this conversation. Check it out. My chat with Doug Pinnock from King's X. Cool, man. Well, I'm really, really grateful you were able to come and chat with us today. Um, Thanks. I, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're one of those kind of mythical guys when it comes to rock because <laughs> you've, you've always been, um, a real musician's musician. Uh, you're, you're one of these musicians that's super respected and, uh, you know, being, being a musician myself, um, King's X were really, really important when I started playing music. Um, and they were kind of like one of those mythical bands that, you know, did you get to see them yet? Have you seen them? Did you know they influenced this band? And it's, it's nuts how, um, this band has always kind of stayed. I don't want to say stayed under the radar, but have always <laughs> yeah. kind of, but have stayed, uh, but have stayed under the radar and it still makes no fucking sense to me because I, you know, I, I listen back. Well, obviously I listened to, um, you know, some of the stuff off of, uh, three sides of one, what's available. Um, and it just falls right in line with the rest of the catalog. But, you know, when you go back and you listen to Gretchen, um, it's, it's a masterpiece of a record. And is it weird when you have this much time to reflect on stuff you did that long ago? And, and are, is, is it, cause I'm sure there's periods where 
you're you're like, why are more people not hearing this? And do you get to a point where you just reside yourself saying we we wrote great music that's respected? Um, yeah, I think it's sadly enough, everything that you've said, I've had to go through, we've all had to go through and deal with in in some way or another. And at this point in our life, we just we're proud of what we've done. And still surprised that people even liked it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we just understand that this is just the way the cookie crumbles, you know. Uh, that's just the way it is. I mean, the Ramones were riding around in a van, I was told before they broke up. And, you know, uh, you can just think of a lot of bands that maybe touched people or changed the way music was, but they never got their due. And uh, that's kind of the way it is in real life all the time. You know, um, yeah. we could just go down the list of so many bands that somebody else saw. I mean, B.B. King, if you look at the guy that his mentor was, I saw a little video of the, this dude that B.B. King said was his uh, idol. And the guy looked, acted and played his guitar just like B.B. King. So it's like, it just blows your mind that and you, nobody ever heard of him. Or Little Richard, the, the yeah. guy that Little Richard tried to copy looked even more like Little Richard. But this guy didn't even get to make a record, right. you know. So, it, you know, at, at the end of the day, you're just glad you're a part of the music. Sure. You know, part of the a part of the part of the thing, because in, in you waste you waste so much time on the past what you could have did could have done and you know we are who we are we did what we did we made the choices that we made and we're to blame if we have any complaints uh and we rightfully need to get over it and get on with our lives like you should yeah you know so i think at at my age i've finally uh, uh, gotten to that place where i look back now and just smile and go yeah it was a good ride and, and, and the ride is still rolling you know well that's the thing and i and it seems like you know um and of course now everybody looks at at people's lives through the lens of social media because it's the most you know it's, it's the easiest way to connect with someone yeah and it seems like judging by everything you post you're having a really good time like you're loving <laughs> yeah. life it seems like you're having fun um you know you've got this project that uh that i'm a fan of um i mean obviously uh, ray luzier is a friend of mine um and we got ray to do this um to play drums on this quarantine cover that we did during the pandemic mm -hmm. and it was through my friendship with Ray that I discovered uh, KXM and I was like, what is this? You know, <laughs> you, him and George Lynch. I mean, like, man, what a, and it just, it's, it's crazy. And to see, to see you where you're at in your life, to want to, to, to want to go and make music like that, that just, just rips just shows that you're, you're still in it to win it. I mean, you, you're not, you know, it, uh, you, you might be mild mannered and stuff, but when you get behind the bass and you're making music, you, you still have your teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun of it. <laughs> Definitely. We do what we're made to do, you know? So tell me a bit about making this new record. Um, how, is this the kind of thing that was done? Is I mean, this is the common story I'm finding with a lot of people that I speak to. Was it either born in the pandemic or was it something that was done and then had to be put on hold because of the pandemic? Yeah, it was done. Uh, and when Michael started to mix it, the pandemic happened. Ah, and yeah. so the whole world shut down and he shut down with it. Um, then after that, we had a, a, a legal matter with the record company and we had to get out of the record contract and get another contract. And okay. that happened right after the pandemic, around around the end of the pandemic. And so then Michael started to mix it. And then we have to send it to the, the, the vinyl plant and that takes nine months. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's just, I mean, it's been two years or so since, you know, we started on this record. So yeah, everything's from before the pandemic. Did you, um, did you guys look at that time in between, you know, the pressing and, and, and everything shutting down as a time to catch, like to catch up and get ahead or like, did, did you guys get together and say, let's stockpile, let's write some more. So we're ahead of the game or is it the kind of thing where you just, no, no, <laughs> no, no, it just, you know, everything happened at the right time and the right moment where everybody wanted to make a record again. Right. Um, after 14 years, the guys just didn't want to make a record. They just felt like we didn't have nothing more to offer right now. And until we felt we did, 
there's no need to do it. We just sure. we we have a little bit of pride at our age. You know, yeah. it's like, well, I put out a piece of shit now. <laughs> you know, right. So uh so uh, I I remember running into the guys, I think we were on the road doing something, and I pulled out a couple new demos that I had just written. And they liked them, which I was really surprised. And and Jerry said, this is encouraging. And Ty said, man, I got a few songs too. And we all put our songs together and, and uh, started listening to stuff and going, hey, man, maybe we should make a record. I mean, it was that simple. Yeah. And I uh, make a long story short, you know, Derek Schumann pops in and and uh, goes to bat for us to get a record and a uh, record deal. And uh, it just all worked out. And um, we got uh, enough of an advance to go make a real record, not, you know, not something that's that's uh, phoned in. Uh, but uh, so we went into a studio, took a whole month like the old days. Right. And did and did a record. Uh, and it was all analog except Pro Tools in and out. You know, that's amazing. Um, even the mastering was done with tape and two uh, EQs. Wow. So uh, everything went down with two amps and everything. It was pretty cool. That's got to be great because in this climate, in this day and age, you don't hear a lot of records that are being made that way. You know, um, I even use Barbara Streisand's microphone. It's a $30,000 $30, microphone. We rented. Yes. How oh, did, my God. How did, that come, how did that come about? Well, out, out in L.A., you can rent anything. You want sure. the snare for Super Unknown, you can go rent it. Right. You know, right. the yeah. exact snare. There, yeah. there's, there's a whole, out here in LA, everything is there. The bank of everything is out there. Everything's re uh, like uh, recorded and stuff, you know. So, and, and we do that. I mean, Michael will go rent stuff, you know, to get that exact, that tone that we need. You know, we don't rely on our, our own little gear uh, um, all the time. You know, you go out and get what works in the studio like they did in the old days, you know. So, um, that was fun. And look, just letting Michael do his thing. Um, it was sort of like every song had to be its own song sonically. Yeah. Everything about it, you know, that we didn't want each song to sound like the next song. Right. Um, and uh and that had a lot to do with Michael who produced it. Uh just the way he did it. Uh, he went and pulled out every King's X record and played them all, he told me. Uh, and he found everything, the, the greatest moments, I guess. He's finding it. He, he said, this is it. We're going to put it all together and make up, you know, and he just, he was like the leader of the boat, you know. We're we're on the boat paddling, throwing our two cents in there. We got these tunes. And, and any time we, uh, anything we suggested, he was already there and would exhaust you with it, you know. Yeah. So... You know, it was a lot of fun making this record, and Ty and Jerry will tell you it was a lot of fun too. Well, that's and that's the nice thing. Um, it, it seems like there's, you know, and, and again, I've only heard three songs, but I, I wish it, you could hear the whole thing. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lobby for that, <laughs> but I wish yeah. I would have been able to do it yeah. before. But um, yeah. I, I mean, it's coming out. It's coming out in a few days. So yeah, okay. in a couple of days. But um, but what's great is that what I have heard, it does all sound a little bit different, but it does sound yeah. like exactly what you said. It sounds like the best elements of this band. Oh, and there's some more there's some more elements that's gonna pop up. It's, you're gonna you're gonna love it. <laughs> I'm looking forward I to it. I hope. Um, you know, it's funny when you when you go back and you listen to uh, Gretchen Goes to Nebraska, uh, you know, comes out in eighty nine. I imagine you recorded it a year before or close yeah, to that. Always. And then, you know, you see hear some of those harmonies and then you know, a band like Allison Chains comes out and you you hear the way Jerry Cantrell writes. And I'm like, Jerry had to have been listening to some of that. It had to have, you know, it had to have they come. Told me, they told me they have. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. Yes. And I think it's, 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 you know, I, and I know you guys don't necessarily fall in what I'm going to, what I'm about to say, but there was this sweet spot uh, in music in the late eighties and early nineties, right before grunge roared in that anything could, Go, like there were no rules. Um, and I really, really right. believe that you guys were kind of one of the bands that ushered that in. You know, I believe that bands like Faith No More, um, and Chili you know, Peppers, bands like the Chili Peppers, bands yeah. like Living Color. It was just one of the most magical times in music. And I don't think anyone's shown enough of a light on that that time. You know, everyone talks about the 80s, everyone talks about the 90s. Yeah. But there was that little spot that transition, before, that transition where Nobody really knew where we were going, but people right. were just doing everything. That. And it I mean, was everybody was asking, where's it going? Where's yeah. it going? Because people were even like bored. It was like we had guns and roses and that was it. 
Yeah. You know, and everybody's going, okay, we're ready for something new now. This just fell apart. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, and then obviously, you know, bands like Pearl Jam who, who, who sung your praise for years and, and rightfully yeah. so, but it's just, it's just really cool to see that a band like you guys are still in it for the right reasons to make music. You know, I don't yeah, think there's anything thanks. else around it besides that. And oh, let's fact- not forget the cult too. They kind of, oh yeah. Yeah. With- that was like out there. She sells sanctuary. That was ACDC. You two, yep, perfectly put together, which was was what I wanted to hear. Right, right. In a time <laughs> where, in a time where alternative music was was big, so I'd have a, you know, and then when yeah. they, you know, when they went from, um, when they went from love to electric, it was like they turned up the seventies to like. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um. So oh, what a time. So tell me a bit about this project with uh, with Ray and George. Um, is this what do you guys? Because I imagine you're all very busy. Uh, how, how does this happen? Because you're you know it's not just one record. I believe it's three three albums. Yeah, now, right? three. We're going to be doing four pretty soon. So this is more than a side project. This is a side band. Uh, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> we've never thought about. It. Are we dating? <laughs> or are we just friends? <laughs> I guess we're dating. <laughs> I guess this is uh, serious. <laughs> It's my mistress, you know, she pops in every now and then. Um, what we do is we get together in a studio and we just set up and we take a week. Right. And we just we just make up parts. We'll just sit down and make five parts up and we'll stop and go, that's enough parts. And me and me and uh uh uh, uh George will just get up and make, you know, get something to eat or something, and Ray will go into the studio and he'll cut and paste. I think I got a song here and he'll come in, he'll play it for us. And he always says, think you can make some melodies over that. I'm going, yeah. And they go, okay, next song. And we usually do like two songs a day. Wow. And it's so much fun. Yeah. Um, somebody will just have a part and they'll just start playing it. And the other two will just fall in with whatever we're thinking. We're just going at it, you know, and it doesn't take but a second. Because yeah. and the thing what I love about it is since we've done we've done this for so long, you don't have to sit down and make up a part and go, well, is this okay? Do you like this? Do you think this will work? You might not, you know, everything we do now is go, that fucking works. Right. You know, because you yeah. know what you don't like. And, of course. and you have this trust factor where it's like whatever you do, I'm gonna make up something that's gonna go along with that. You know, this is ain't nobody taking a back seat, you know. Yeah. And um and we go at it like that, very competitive, but in true fun and laughter at the same time. Um, then we go home and we kind of phone it in after that. We take all the drums tracks home and uh, then uh, I put all my bass tracks back on new right. ones. You know, I, right. learn, I get I get, own the song and, and um, everybody does basically. Oh, and one thing too is after we cut and pasted the songs to make them songs, Ray goes in and plays the whole song straight through as right. a one take. Right. He amazes me. He, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. He's, like, what? <laughs> He's got a photographic drum mind. He's a beast. And the first yeah. time, the first time I heard him play was, um, I was a big fan of Stone Temple Pilots. And obviously when, you know, the DeLeo brothers did that project with, with Richard, the army of anyone, I went and I grabbed it right away. I was like, Oh, I got to hear this army of anyone record. This is brilliant. You know, filter Stone Temple Pilots. Poof. And I was like, but who's this guy playing drums? And I remember hearing, um, the first two songs and I was like, how is this guy playing all that? And how is he doing all that in one song? And when Corn got him, I was like, man, I mean, you know, and I don't, and I'm not bashing anyone, but Corn went from here to here when he came into the band. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they like did, Dave, did. Dave was a great drummer and he, he mm-hmm. really was, there was mm-hmm. a feel there, but man, seeing Corn with, with Ray is just like, it's, yeah. it's, you know, he's yeah. like, it, and, and that's what I love about this project. And I, we will talk about King's X more, but what I love about KXM is that it really seems like the three of you are guys that are at the peak of your playing and you're just getting together and having a good time. Yeah. I like that interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems like, and exa- and now hearing how you put it together, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. It makes perfect it's, sense. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, there are live dates that are going to come along with this King's X. Um, we're out. Uh, we've been playing. Okay. The only time we, we shut down was when uh, the pandemic happened, like everybody else, but we've done three shows so far. Okay. Uh, we got some, we got some shows next month and, 
Um, so they're starting to book us and try to get that worked out. Do you still enjoy getting up there and playing? Not as much as I used to. Okay. Um, I think the pandemic kind of did that for me. Being home helped me realize, well, made me realize that I like being home. Yeah. I don't care about being around a whole lot of people and being able to just do what I want to when I want to without any pressure, kind of like almost like retiring, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'll be 72 soon. So I was just thinking, man, you know, do I, how much do I still want to do this? And I've always said, I'm going to go, I'm going to rock out till I'm, I'll be walking on stage with crutches, still doing my thing, you know? Right. But, um, the, the, the year and a half off and basically it was almost two and a half years since we toured. It was really kind of scary because it was the first time in my life I actually was had to think about it. And I've been playing, I've been singing and playing all my life. And anytime I needed to get up and do something, I just got up and did it. There was no big deal. But sure. But this time it was like, you get ready to run a marathon and you haven't done this in two and a half years. And all of a sudden the, the reality came in and, and we were all, all three of us c- were kind of concerned. Can we do this? Yeah. Um, we did the last three shows and yeah, we had to think a lot through the shows. It wasn't second nature like we wanted it to be, but by the time we got to the third show, it started coming back to us. And yeah. so we, we know now that, yeah, we can do this. Um, and, and in terms of putting set lists together and stuff, is it different? Like, do you have, like you were just ma- alluding to, like, do you have to look at the way you put things together a little bit differently? Oh, than, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, can't, I can't do a lot of those songs anymore. Well, we want to do a lot of the new record now. Sure. Of course. Because I, I think, I mean, it's tailor made for us. And so I yeah. think we can do them and get, get through them, you know, instead of trying to yell through the old songs and sing at the top of my lungs, which I can't do anymore. Right. Over my head. It's like, I ain't, you know, I ain't a kid no more. <laughs> it's uh, but you know, I, I just think the fact that the King's X is back, there's new music is, is a really exciting thing. I think it's, it's wonderful that a younger generation will get to see you guys play live. And, um, yeah. and I, I'm just excited about it. And, and I, I just want to thank you for taking the time to chat today. I know that, you know, you got a lot on your plate, but, um, but it's really nice to be able to, to connect with you and, and to talk to you. You know, I, you're someone who I've followed for a long time. And I have a, oh. a tremendous amount of respect for as a musician and as an artist, because you guys were the roadmap for a lot of bands to, to, you know, just to just do what you needed to do for you. And, and there's a tremendous amount of respect that's, that's, um, you know, that's, that's given because of that. So I commend you for that. Well, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to chat today, man. You're and, welcome, man. And I, and I hope to come to a show soon. I hope you guys come up to Canada at one point. It'd be great to see. You oh guys. yeah. We got to get up there. Oh my goodness! That's I'm sure you. I'm sure you got. I'm sure you got to get up to everywhere. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's uh, been but, a long time. It's been a long time. But I'll definitely let Ray know that we chatted and uh, and thank you. Thanks for taking the time, man. You're welcome. Tell him I said hey. I will for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, talk right, to man. you when we get up there. All right, take care, man. It's always interesting to hear. It's not even what a band is; it's what a band does. Mm-hmm. And King's X is one of those bands where I'm like, when you hear all these iconic music defining bands that list them as kind of like a yeah yeah like all these bands like the red hot chili peppers that kind of essentially said i do what i want because before the red hot chili peppers when you think of a punk funk band you're like did that really ever happen so it's kind of cool that king's x puts that idea in someone's mind that they can just you know i do what i want and uh you know it's, yeah. it's really cool that uh they're still going after all this time, you know, and they're not just uh, old men yelling at clouds. I mean, you know, here they are still creating music. It's not easy to write music after like what, 40 years. So it's uh, all the power to them. No. And they're, and they're so relevant still too. And it's, you know, when people, when they put out an album, it's a big deal and they've got, you know, uh, Doug has a side project with, uh, with Ray from corn and with George Lynch uh, called KXM. That is just so, so cool. And I love the way they write the records. Like they say, they go in, they write everything live off the floor, record it, and that's done. And then Ray goes and plays the drums over it. It's like, and it does everything spot on. I mean, it, Ray is a, is a monster musician um, yeah. in Corn. He brought Corn from here to here. As much as I love David and Corn, he was great, but Ray brought them to a whole other level. And um, 
it's just fun to see a young guy like that slip in with a band like, you know, with, 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 with a band, you know, with someone like Doug in the band and George Lynch, who's another monster guitar player, you know, and a bass player like Doug, the three of them creating is just, you know, it's a, it's a freaking masterclass music wet dream. <laughs> so it's, a, it's actually, <laughs> if you've never heard KXM, they're a really cool band. And, um, and I remember when we, we, uh, spoke to, when we spoke to Ray, we haven't had Ray on the show yet. We've got to get Ray on the show. That's something we definitely need to do. But, um, when we were getting Ray involved with Kings of Quarantine, uh, him and I went back and forth quite a bit, you know, coordinating things and trying to find time when he could record and all this stuff. And through those conversations, he, he mentioned KXM to me. And um, I said to him, I go, man, like, it's just, it must be so cool to play with Doug Pinnock. And you could tell, like, his his, his reaction was like, yeah, man. He goes, like, I've been a King's X fan forever. So um, it's just, it's cool to have him on the show. And, I, and I'm glad, I'm really glad. And I hope, I hope some people discover King's X. Gretchen Goes to Nebraska is one of the best records ever. Um, it's a desert island disc for me. It's so, so good. And, you know, yes, they, they fall in that progressive rock kind of vein, but they're very accessible at the same time. The melodies are incredible. Um, his voice is just phenomenal. And yeah, you'll definitely sit with King's X for a bit and start with Gretchen Goes to Nebraska. It's a great, great record. Awesome. I like that desert island discs. You don't hear that expression enough. I know, right? I, I have, I have many, but, but, but the thing is, if I go on a desert island disc thing, I, I've got to bring like, I'll need, you know, I need, I need a, like a trailer to put them all in. Cause I, I you say, oh yeah, that's my desert. like asking me to, to have five or like your 10 desert island discs, like it would be fucking impossible. It would, it, would, it would depend on what island I was deserted on. A disc kids is what people used to listen to music on before your precious iPhones and iPods existed. Well, yeah. And then after vinyl, so desert Island disc or desert Island albums, but desert Island discs sounds so much better. It yeah. does actually. Compact yeah. discs. God, I hate those things. Did. <laughs> Did. Do you like, do you, do, you, do, you, do you like compact, do you like compact discs? Uh, compact disc kind of, kind of came into vogue when I was, um, a young lad. So it's yeah. kind of what I knew. And uh, the love or the loves of vinyl were the generation before me. Yeah. So you know, vinyl to me at first, even though it's superior sound quality, uh, is essentially a pain in the ass because I'm like, they're how big, and it takes the, how long to put them on, and well, it's, 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 it's hard it, to find a song. So it's it, it's actually r r vinyl. It's vinyl is great. It's there's a ritual <laughs> to it. It sounds great, but. Mm. Superior sound wise, you can't get much better than a really good disc. Like a, a compact disc on a good player is mm. sounds will set will blow like sound wise will blow vinyl out of the water, but it's not cool. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I gotcha. Well, I, I grew up with tapes mostly because yeah, you, know, you know me, I don't, I don't have nice things. Um, <laughs> I, I, I everything breaks. So, yeah. um, when it came to tapes, uh, even though temp technically they props probably sound comparatively pretty awful i had this uh thing where if i didn't want to listen to a full side of a tape and i liked the song on the other side i knew if i listened to two and a half songs on this side it would line up for the two songs <laughs> i liked on the other side yeah so in a way that's much more difficult than listening to a vinyl so no. i don't know no definitely i mean and and it's funny how people are their their cassettes were making a comeback and i saw bands pressing cassettes and i saw bands doing <laughs> eight track tapes and i'm like that's just i mean eight track tapes are are a fucking novelty like where Bro, you i love i love to be vintage man yo you get your sundial yet it's like oh yeah man. yeah it, it gets a little goofy like i cassettes i've got a couple of cassettes that i've gotten records you know on recently just for nostalgia purposes but i'm never gonna listen to them. i'm a cassette player like i don't want a cassette player that that technology was the worst because it was like any any moment that tape could snap and when it snapped yeah. you were like fucked and at least <laughs> cd was cd was better than that um, but then with CDs, you were dealing with the skipping, mm -hmm. you know, and I remember when I, when I first, got, first got my first anti-skip Walkman, it was like, wow, this is the shit. But cassettes were pretty cool. I mean, but sound wise, I mean, if you were taping off, they, they just got worse and worse when it was a copy of a copy of a copy and it just, ugh. so CDs kind of blew that out of the water, but. I think we got to thank all the snowboarders and skateboarders for making the Discman, the anti-skip Discman come into vogue because pretty much. When I was uh, when I was getting uh, disc mints and all that kind of stuff, um, that's pretty much why disc mints got better in a very short amount of time. It's because yeah. uh, people really couldn't listen to them while snowboarding. So no, no, it's, it's, and 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 they were nice at one point. They were super thin. I remember you could just put it in your jacket pocket, and it was. Yeah. But now, 
you know, streaming and I, I for me, streaming and vinyl is fine. It, it's it's the perfect combination. You all know, stream my music. I'll pay. And anyways, that this could be a whole episode where we talk about the, <laughs> the, the, where music went because mm -hmm. it's it's crazy to see how much music's changed in my lifetime and in your lifetime format yeah. wise because it's come right back to vinyl again, which is yeah. bananas because no one ever thought that was going to come back. Anyways, um, thanks so much for hanging out with us this week. Uh, we're really really excited to have Doug on the show. So thank you, Doug, for accepting. Um, thank you to Heartbeat Hot Sauce. Uh, for being the best hot sauce company in the world. This is the Blueberry Habanero. Uh, so thanks to Heartbeat Hot Sauce. Rockman20 is your promo code. We can get it for you right down in the corner there. And uh, you will get 20% uh, off your entire hot sauce order. And thank you to Heart Studio House Designs for keeping us look fresh. Um, looking fresh. They've always got new drops that happen uh, fairly regularly. They've got some great stuff in the pipeline. And uh, they're just great people. So support them. StudioHouseDesigns.com com and uh everybody make sure you follow studio house designs on instagram uh, in their stories they're always talking about the new designs that come out but let me tell you um we are not above missing a deadline okay we were working winnipeg comic-con it was great jason i missed out on ordering the casper hoodie a and the beetlejuice me i missed out on beetlejuice and casper and messaged them on Tuesday saying, oh, my God, I missed a deadline. And they're like, we already sent it out to the printer. So just to let everybody know, make sure you follow. Mm. When they say there's a deadline, there's we a are deadline. not about yeah, that yeah, yeah. deadline. Nobody is. They, yeah. they, everybody's completely equal when it comes to ordering Studio House Designs. So make sure you follow their socials because they don't fuck around. Uh, thanks to our uh, my co-host Ryan Stick, of course, and thanks to our producer Julia Kajerski, and thanks to all of you. Please like, subscribe, uh, comment below what you want to see on the podcast, who you want to hear. We want to know from you. This is uh, we've been going a year strong now, and we want to know from you who you want to see on the podcast and who you want to hear. And uh, next week on the show, we have got uh, somebody really, really cool from the world of hip hop. I'm excited to have Denzel Curry, who's going to be joining us next week on the show. This guy, it's absolutely bananas how much momentum this guy is getting. He's an incredible lyricist, incredible performer, and a really, really bright guy. And he's only like 26 or 27. So next week, we'll have Denzel Curry on the show. Looking forward to that. And until then, we'll see you on the Rockman Power Hour.